Good afternoon. Introduce. We have a guest speaker today. Did you guys see anybody new today? Yes. Yeah. Well, we have a guest speaker. It's uh, Mr. Kirk Coach Ken Lola, and he is the head soccer coach for the men's soccer team at the University of Louisville. Uh, they this year and last year were in the Elite Eight in the soccer tournament, and I guess it's three years ago or two years ago, however you want to look at it. Uh, they were in the championship game against UCLA, right? Yeah. And uh, he has also had, most recently, two players that went to the MLS, the Offensive Rookie of the Year and the Defensive Rookie of the Year. So he's a very talented coach, and we're very lucky to have him to speak with us here today, okay? So let's give him your attention, all right? Give him a hand. Go. Oh, thank you. you guys are so attentive. You're so alert and aware this morning, and I love the way that you, when uh, questions are asked, you raise your hand. I'm going to read a book to you, and I might ask you some questions as well. So if anybody wants to answer, raising your hand is the best way. You guys do such a good job of that. The book um, that I'm going to read to you today is a book that um, my wife back there, Tina, and I, we put this together. And here's how this went. Can I pull this, this chair a little bit closer to you guys? This is, this is how it went. When, when our kids, we have three kids, one Tyler who's now 15. Uh, we have Christiana, who's 12, and Elijah, who's nine, pretty close to your age. He's a little bit older than you guys. When they're young, all right, still even for them 15, 12, and nine, they like hearing stories before they go to bed. And when Tyler was the youngest, he's 15 now, and he was like two and three years old, he would ask for stories every night, and we would make up stories for him to hear. This is a story that we made up. And I told Tyler and Christiana and Elijah, and they would constantly say, can we hear that story about Johnny? Please tell me that story about Johnny. Well, at one point, we decided to make the story into a book. We found a wonderful, gifted artist, illustrator, that did the pictures for this and made the story come to life. So it has a great message, and a message that is, goes along with this, this verse here about your gifts, and that we all have gifts. And not only do we all have gifts, but it's important that we share those gifts with others. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this story to you. I'm going to ask you some questions about the story and see how it relates to you guys as well. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Okay. All right. And, and the, the name of the story is called... Finding your gifts. All right, we'll take you through this. And the illustrations on here are absolutely one. Has anybody read this book yet? Oh, so it's new for all of you. Beautiful. All right. So here's here's the main character, and you see he's holding a soccer ball. What do you think this story is about? Soccer. soccer. Yes, that's right. That's right. As Tyler practiced, big. Oh, I'm um, skipping. I'm sorry, but one, one page ahead. Here's Tyler, and he's standing on a soccer ball. As the sun rose in the clear blue sky, Tyler walked to soccer practice in an African village. He was thinking about the big game on Saturday. Tyler and many of his animal friends played for the Jungle United soccer team. Today's practice was important because Saturday was the championship game against Jungle United's biggest rival, the Amazon Soccer Club. And you can see some of his friends here playing, right? How much fun is it to play with your friends? You, you, very. What, what do you guys like to play with your friends? What, what do you like to play? Um, I like to play tag. Tag? Freeze tag. Tag's a good one. Yes, and how good it is to have friends to play with. I bet you do a lot of that after school, don't you? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this is what happened when they were playing. As Tyler practiced, big drops of water began to fall on his face. He wiped away the drops, looked up, and realized it wasn't raining. Instead, it was giant teardrops from Johnny the Giraffe, one of Tyler's animal friends. Johnny was so tall that the teardrops <laughs> They, they seemed like rain from the clouds. So he started feeling these raindrops, and he looked up to see what was going on, and 
it appeared that, that he was crying. So what do you think a good friend would do? What would he do if he saw his friend crying? Help him feel better. Ooh, good. Give him like a big hug and say, are you feeling okay? Very good. Those are, those are great because when somebody said, you want to say, well, let's, let's find out what's going on. We want to find out why he said. And maybe give him a hug and, and make him feel better. <clears throat> So Tyler yelled up to Johnny, what's the matter, John? But Johnny, with his long legs and even longer neck, was too tall to hear Tyler's voice. Tyler wanted to know what was bothering his friend. So he carefully climbed the tallest tree in order to talk to Johnny. Wow, he must be a good friend. Huh? To climb the tall tree, that's a little bit scary. But he wanted to help his friend. And sometimes when we help our friend, we need to do some things that maybe aren't comfortable sometimes to extend ourselves to help each other out. He was willing to climb the tallest tree to go talk to him. He says to him, he says, why are you crying, Johnny, Tyler asked. I'm crying because no one wants to play with me, Johnny said sadly. I am too tall and have funny spots. My neck is so long that sometimes I can't even hear when others speak to me because I am so far away. I am different from the other animals. Tyler felt Johnny's sadness. Suddenly, he had a wonderful idea. Johnny, how would you like to play on our team, Jungle United? Tyler asked. This Saturday, we play for the championship against the Amazon Soccer Club. You mean it, asked Johnny in a hopeful voice. Absolutely, said Tyler. I will ask the team with the other animals and be right back. Have you ever felt any time where you were sad because you weren't included in something? Has anybody ever felt like that? Yeah. And that doesn't feel good if you're not included in something, does it? So, so Tyler's trying to help him now. He said, well, you could be on our team. And he's going to go back to the other animals and ask them. So let's see what happens here. Then Tyler, Tyler carefully shimmied down the tree and gathered his teammates. Hey guys, Johnny is sad because he has no one to play with, Tyler said. Why don't we put him on our team for the championship game on Saturday? The animals were not happy about having Johnny on the team. He is too tall. That's what Lionel the lion said. Look how skinny his legs are and how long his neck is. Yeah, and you have to scream to talk to him. Besides, this is the biggest game of the year, Mikey the monkey sh uh, chimed in. So they're, what are they saying? They're saying, I don't think so. He's different. He's too tall. He doesn't look like the rest of us. We don't want him included. What does Tyler have to do now? He has a special gift, doesn't he? Well, Tyler's going to try to convince his friends that, that even though he's different, maybe he should join us. And that's okay that he's different. Let's see what happens here. You are absolutely right, Tyler responded. Johnny is different from us in many ways. That means he can add something to our team. Remember, we were all new to the team at one time. At one time. So he's saying he's different, and that's okay. And because he's different, there's a piece of the puzzle that he adds to complete the whole puzzle, to complete the whole picture. So they're, they're all, they're not too sure. They're all gathered around. And sometimes it's hard to be Tyler, isn't it? Because all the friends are saying, oh, no, he can't join us. And he's sticking up for his friend. That's a good friend when you stick up for that. And it's the right thing to do. Well, let's see what happens. Finally, the, ad, the animals decided to let Johnny join the team. When he heard the good news, Tyler carefully climbed the tall tree again to tell his friend, Johnny, Tyler said, the animals agreed to put you on the team. Really? Johnny asked. Yes, 
Tyler replied. Oh boy, so now he's on the team. Now he's got to get, he, he's on the team. What do you think you would do? You heard the news and you said there's a championship game on Saturday. And Johnny says, yes, I'm on the team. Now what does he need to do? Practice. He needs to practice. He needs to prepare. He has this opportunity and he wants to be ready for the opportunity, so now he has to prepare. When you guys have a test in school, what do you need to do? Prepare. 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 You need to get ready for it. If you got a, a basketball game coming up, what do you need to do? Prepare. Pre practice. That's right. You need to get ready for it. So that when the opportunity comes, you're ready to do your best. So let's see what Johnny does. Johnny was excited. He wanted to help the team, so he practiced every day that week. He woke up early in the morning to prepare for the big game. Johnny ran through the jungle with the cheetahs. He practiced shooting the ball with the monkeys. He worked on defense with the hyenas. Most importantly, he practiced heading the ball with the elephants. This is what Johnny did best. He knew he would be ready for the big game and would not let his teammates down. You are right. He's a pretty good header, so he's practicing especially that. Whatever his gift was, he sharpened that up. Whether it's the piano, whether it's soccer, whatever your gift is, we need to continue to develop that, whatever it is. All right. Wow, look at that group. Who do you think that is? The other team. The other team. They're big. That's Amazon. Do they look big? Yeah. Ooh, they look tough too, don't they? Yeah. Oh boy. That's a big team. Okay, so let's see. When Saturday came, Johnny was ready to help win the championship. When he got his jersey, he quickly put it on and felt proud to be part of the team. After the warm-ups, Lionel the Lion announced the starting lineup. Johnny was to start the game on the bench. Although Johnny wanted to play, he supported his team as the game went on. That's pretty important, isn't it? How many sometimes want to be the one start the game or participate? We all do, don't we? But sometimes as a good teammate, we need to take our, our seat on the bench and support the ones that are playing. And Johnny was very grateful just to be on the team, and he supported his team. What a good story that is. The Amazon team was the best team they had ever played all year. They were big and fast and can jump high. Nothing Jungle United tried seemed to work. As the first half ended, Jungle United was down 2-0. So here was the championship game. And they were playing the best team they had ever played. And they were big. Look at the size of them. They're massive. And everything they tried didn't work. They were losing 2-0. So what do you think they should do at halftime? What, what's an idea? They should play the giraffe dinner. Ooh, maybe use Johnny? What else? Is there anything? Maybe uh, just try to keep trying until they get a goal. Good. Um, at halftime, they can practice more. Those are all really good suggestions. <laughs> and what I was taught when I was a young boy, that if something is not working, if I'm struggling and I have challenges, sometimes it's important to reflect. And that means to think about it and say, what is it that we're doing? Is it working or not working? Because sometimes then we have to change what we're doing to have success. Sometimes we need to take a different road, try something new, and let's see what they do. Here we go. We're going to see what happens. Here's the team. They're thinking about it. It's halftime, and they're thinking about what happened in the first half. At halftime, Tyler said, we are going to win. We must do something different in the second half. So Tyler was very positive. He said, we can do this. We just have to think about doing something different. We need, we need to let Johnny play. He is really good in the air, so maybe he can help us. Not Johnny, Lionel the Lion said. He can't play. The other animals agreed. He is too tall and slow, one said. 
We can't even talk to him because he can't hear us, said another. <laughs> Tyler would not give up on John, so he tried again. Look, you guys, we need to give ourselves the best chance to win, he said. We have everything to gain by using Johnny. As you know, we are down by two goals without him. So Tyler was saying, without him, we're not succeeding. Let's give him a chance to help us. With that, the animals of Jungle United decided to give Johnny a chance. Tyler, Tyler gave Johnny the news that he would start the second half. Johnny's heart pounded and he began to sweat, even though he was not yet playing. <coughs> Tyler saw Johnny was nervous and said, believe in yourself and do the best you can. Those words gave Johnny confidence. Because Johnny was so tall, he could easily outjump everyone. He got his head on every pass that was high in the air. Soon Johnny's teammates saw they had an advantage and quickly played two high passes towards Johnny. Johnny used his head to shoot the ball and score two goals to tie the score. Wow. Now, Johnny was told he was going in the game, and all of a sudden what happened? He got, his heart started beating faster. Have you ever gotten nervous about anything? Huh? Oh, me too. I've gotten nervous. We're playing in a national final game a couple of years ago, and before the game, my heart's going a little bit faster. And what did Tyler say that was so helpful? What did he say? Did Tyler think? Believe in yourself. Yes, believe in yourself. In the Bible, over and over and over, it says, have faith. Have faith. Fear is a negative entity. Fear is paralyzing. Faith gives you confidence, it gives you strength, it gives you the ability to do wonderful things. And that, that word from Tyler, have faith, believe in yourself, frees you up to score two goals with your head and tie the score. All right, so let's see what happens. Now that the score's tied, the other team might be a little bit nervous. And there's a good picture of the game going on and all the action. With the clock winding down, and the score tied, the Jungle United players knew what they had to do. Lionel the Lion roared, pass it to Johnny. Kevin the Kangaroo yelled, get it to Johnny's head. With that, Tyler quickly kicked a long high pass toward Johnny for the winning goal. So Johnny scores the winning goal with a long high pass. He hit it with his head. He used his gift to help them win the championship. <laughs> oh, that looks like a happy picture, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh? They're all excited about that. After the game, Johnny carried the Jungle United players on his shoulders as they celebrated the victory. How fun is that? Mm -hmm. Then he found Tyler and said, Tyler, thank you for giving me a chance to be on the team. I thought I was too tall to play. Instead, Instead, I discovered my gift and shared it with others. I will always remember you for your kindness. From that day on, Johnny did not worry about being different. He learned that being different is a blessing and a special gift. Because of that, Johnny did not complain about his height or anything else that made him different. Instead, Johnny began to find ways to share his gift and bless others. Now, one of the things in this book that we will go back and look at was, is there anything common, and I'll see, do you see this? This little bird there, this blue bird, you know, Watch when I turn the pages now. Can you see the bird in that picture? Okay, let's see. Can you see the bird in that picture? Ooh. How about in this picture? It's tougher to find. Oh. Hold on. That one's obvious. Okay. He's 
He's in every picture. Yeah. Yes? He's in every picture, isn't he? Okay. At the end, we're introducing Lovey the Bird. Now listen. As you have enjoyed reading this book, it is likely you have noticed Lovey the Bird. Lovey is there to watch over and protect Tyler and his animal friends. She loves Tyler and his friends equally and does not see their differences. All she sees is their love, which is the greatest gift of all. What does the bird symbolize? What is the bird like? Love. Hope. Hope? Yes. Love. Love. Kindness and goodness. Very good. Yes. Now, who in your life is always there for you? It's always right there inside of you that sees all your greatest gifts. God. God. The Holy Spirit is within you. And the bird, lovey, is a symbol of that. Is a symbol of the Holy Spirit that's always within you that sees the love inside of you, that sees your greatest gifts. The story is about you. This story, Johnny, is about you. That every single one of you have a special gift. You, can I see your eyes real quick? You guys are the greatest miracle in the world. All of you are the greatest miracle in the world. And all of you have special gifts. And you may not know yet what that gift is. You may still be trying to figure that out. But God has made you uniquely special. Your difference is what makes you special. So know that God made you unique. Don't try to be like everybody else. Be yourself. And when you find your gift, Make sure you share that with others. That's what God wants. Is he made you unique and gave you a gift so you could share that with others. You are special. The other is, is Tyler helped bring that out, didn't he? Tyler recognized the gift in others. We also have a responsibility to find the gifts in other people and help bring them out. So if you have friends that are sad because they're not included in something, because they feel a little bit different, help them find their gifts. All right? Thank you so much for letting me come here today to read this book to you. All right? Yes? You know what? I live by the Holy Spirit. Excellent. Excellent. The Holy Spirit lives in all of us. I love it. I love it. Oh. Yeah, one more. Yes. Um, I have a pappy that died. He was my grandma's um, father, and he used to give us um, these cookies that we called pappy cookies because he always gave to us, and I still feel it in my heart. Yeah, and that was a gift he had, wasn't it? He came and shared his ability. He shared his ability to, to feed you and give you special gifts that way, his ability to bake and cook. And that's a wonderful thing as well, is when we share our gifts, it's not just temporary, it goes on forever. It's wonderful. Awesome. All right, we've got a couple of things to cover and, and some other things to do really quick. Who liked that story? It's a good story. Well, 